here. So one of the collections Viral didn't get to, which you might have seen at the bottom there, is Explore Collections. And what this actually provides is um, an, an access point, if you like, to some of the big databases that Microsoft's been collating um, with public data. Um, and one of those, which is really quite interesting, there's a whole variety of things here. There's sites with images. There's 3D buildings that people have published onto the map that you've been looking at. There's um, a map cruncher layer, which is all about bringing together those points that, um, for example, you had in a, in a collection and laying out additional data or laying them out in a way that has roots between them, etc. So you're actually adding multiple layers of data to your view. But the last one, which is dear to my heart, is um, Photosynth. And basically, um, I don't know if you've um, seen Photosynth yet. Anyone seen Photosynth? A few people? Did you see me on BBC Click? No. Every, everybody, you know, forget it. Get on TV and, ah, oh, I missed that one. Never mind. It's always the same. But anyway, Photosynth um, is a great technology which enables you to take a whole stack of pictures, throw them at the synther that runs on your own machine, and it works out where each picture is in relation to each other in a 3D world, in a 3D space. So if I took lots of pictures standing here and went from there and stood in the corners and did it all again, I'd be able to recreate you and this room in a 3D world using my pictures and mechanisms of representing it. And what we're actually doing here is, you know, here are some of those um, photosynths that are available. Um, so I could dive into those. But actually what I wanted to do was show you some that are in the UK. Um, so here is the inside of St. Paul's. This is the actual photosynth site that you'd jump to if I jumped off one of those points. Um, but now we're able to quite literally, you know, zoom into this photo. Now these photos are all on the web. You know, they're all photos taken by modern cameras. Um, so, you know, those photos could be 2 megs, they might be 5 megs, they might be 10 megs in size, they might be bigger if it was a professional camera. And we're using a number of technologies here. First one is the positioning of those pictures in 3D space and being able to look into those pictures and do things. But the second one that you're really seeing taking advantage of is the ability to deliver only the bits of data that you need to see at this moment in time. So we're not waiting for that 10 megapixel image to come down and then show you it. We're showing you that bit of the 10 megapixel image that is appropriate for you to see at this moment in time. Yeah? So we're, we're filtering out the data that's irrelevant to you rather than requiring you to download it to see the image. And it means that you can, you know, you can jump around these places and explore the environments um, with some you know, speed now, what's also interesting here, if I just hit that button there, you see the, um, the halo there, or the donut, or the torus, depending on where you're coming from. Um, but that basically gives me the opportunity to step round and see different views. And you can see the pictures gradually rendering as I, as I was talking there. But that halo gives you that opportunity to jump round and see different views. So um, let's um, just step back a bit and see we've got a more elaborate halo here. So I can actually move through different places or different angles of St. Paul's in the open hall there, which is pretty impressive. And you can, what you can also see in the background is all these dots. Now these dots are what we call the point cloud, and each dot represents a unique feature that the photosynth synther recognized in more than one image as it was analyzing them. Okay? Now what's really cool, if I just jump to Stonehenge um, and do something, I can turn the photos off so we just look at this um, point cloud. Now, these images were all taken from our eye level, so standing there looking at it. But because of the ana analysis done of those photos, it, it knows where all those stones are and where they're positioned in 3D space. Yeah? And I can even look underneath Stonehenge, which isn't something you can easily do. Um, but it's worked those out purely from the, the volume of images. And there were 436 images there. Um, and you know, it's been able to determine where each of those stones were, were located just by looking at those images and using a technique similar to us. You know, it starts off with one photo, which is like us having one eye. And then it adds a second photo that, that seems to marry up on the data points. And by then using two points of reference, it can start to determine some depth of field. And as it adds more photos to it, it can increase its understanding of the 3D world and eventually end up with something as spectacular as, as Stonehenge um, just there. Now, 
Here's one for the um, older members of the audience. Who remembers that film, Blade Runner? Now, who remembers the relevant scene that I'm about to try and reenact? Can you tell me what it is? Yes. How, how you know, I mean, you, I'm a fan of uh, Blade Runner and technology, uh, as anybody that's seen me present before will know. Um, and it's just like, I want to be able to reproduce that scene where Deckard, the, um, <coughs> the policeman, if you like, he has to track down all these uh, rebel robots, essentially, that are running around the world. Um, he uses a computer and a tool to be able to analyse the image. Now, I'm probably far too excited to make this work, and it's like children, beg your pardon, uh, animals and uh, food. Um, you know, you don't do speech synthesis live, do you, in front of an audience, because it never works. But... The opportunity is too great to miss. So I'm just going to switch this on and then we'll see where we get. It says it's listening. So, mouse grid. No. Another one. Smug mug. I didn't want to do that one. <laughs> mouse grid. Oh, I knew it wouldn't work. Mouse grid, go on. You can do it. Yes. Oh. Well, so just as well, they're good photographs. But what I wanted to show you was that mouse grid, and it's going to jump off and do other things. But there you go. I'm far too excited to, to, to use successfully this. But try once more. Mouse grid. Five two mark. Eight six click. Yay. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, up arrow, <laughs> ah, I've lost it, anyway, did you know mouse grid was there, did you know mouse grid was there, no, so when you're in the quiet of your own home and there's nobody looking over your shoulder and you're not mic'd up, you can do mouse grid, you can tell it to click into places and you can control this thing um, through speech and you can even, because we tried it this afternoon, say print screen and it will capture the screen you're currently looking at, just like Deckard did when he was tracking down the uh, robots. Anyway, it's enough time on that fun little bit. But uh, Photosynth, photosynth.net, it's free to use. Um, all the synths you create are public. That's the only uh, aside on that. Did you tell them where you could actually create your own Photosynth? They probably might want to know that. So if I go back to the Photosynth website and go to... Um, photosynth.net? Yeah, photosynth.net, thank you and go to create. It gives you the opportunity to go download the software that you need to be able to go and create a synth. And it all runs just locally on your XP or Vista machine. So next time you're on that vacation or holiday and either the kids or you take a whole bunch of pictures that you think are worthless, you know, think again. It might actually create a really cool synth, uh, especially if you take it of a single area or region.